name is uh, Rudolph Young, and I'm here to tell you about uh, my new book. It's called Muslim Brotherhood and Fatima Bello of Sokoto. And, uh, and it, it's, it is about the uh, interpretation of the Venture Smith slave narrative. In 2006, uh, the Coalition of Churches, Mount Calvary uh, Baptist Church in Vail, and Mount Vernon Baptist Church in Iron Station, and I started to uh, interpret the uh, the uh, Vincent Smith slave narrative. Of course, I know y'all, uh, you like us, we don't uh, don't uh, didn't know that it it needed interpretation, but it but it did. Uh, in fact, our interpretation was the first in 230 years. And this is what we found when we uh, uh, interpret the Venture Smith slave narrative. And one of the things that we um, that we uh, found was that it was not really a uh, it's not really a slave narrative. It was a diary. Uh, it was a, a, a handbook on how to control black people, and also it was uh, about the part of the Moreno Jews of uh, Spain and their role in the Atlantic slave trade. And. What does the Vincent Smith narrative tell us? The Vincent Smith narrative told us that Muhammad Bello, the second sultan of the Sokoto Caliphate, sent his niece and nephew to Liberia to meet and collect Abdurrahman Ibrahim Sori, but was who was waiting there. He had said that the Ibu was his enemy, but Fatima and her brother were double-crossed by the Sultan's ally, the ambitious Mandinka, and they were sold to the crewmen and taken to Galinas and sold to the Moreno Jew called Raymond Pierre uh, Ferrar pretending to be a Spanish, to be a Spaniard. He was actually the, actually the Roman Barra in Cuba, who was the captain of the Amistad and of the fake French Lafitte family that had to flee Spain for France and ended up seeking uh, refuge in western North Carolina and met the Guyon family who were French Huguenots who had also fled uh, France and they came to Lincoln County together and Lorenzo Farrar hid in Lincoln County under the name of Pierre Lafitte and Lorenzo Farrar is the uh, father of Maria Elizabeth Guyon, a slave of Haywood Guyon, and she attended high school in Charlotte, the Peabody High School, where Cicero Harris 
later became a bishop in the Amy Zion Church was the principal. And she married Cicero Harris after she graduated from Atlanta University in 1789 and returned to Lincoln and co-founded with him Livingstone College in first in uh, uh, Concord and later moved to uh, uh, Salisbury and the name change was changed, was changed from Zion Wesley Institute to Livingstone College. While Elizabeth was in Lincoln, she met a young girl named Lucy Craft, who had been sent up from Augusta, Georgia, by the American Missionary Association, the AMA, to start a school in western Lincoln County in Vail, North Carolina, at Best Chapel. She opened that school in 1868 with an assistant named Nathan Bess. And she taught there for one uh, school term in 1868, and in 1869, she entered Atlanta University. And then she became, later she became Lucy Craft Laney, a, an educator, a great educator in the uh, uh, state of, of Georgia. Of course, Elizabeth Guyon later also in, attended uh, and graduated from Atlanta University in, in uh, 1879. And of course, uh, Lucy Craft got her a job as a teacher in southern, in southern uh, Georgia. That's how she was able to finance her education. Of course, she came back to Lincoln, and then she uh, married Cicero Harris, and then you already know the rest of the story. Of course, Lorenzo Farrar uh, and his uh, <laughs> mistress, Louisa, and his daughter, Mary Elizabeth Guyon, were not the only former French Huguenots to come to Lincoln seeking freedom of religion. Uh, those other families in Bacon County who had come here from France fleeing religious persecution were the Phonies, the Berards, Duke, Moral, that had their origin in France and left Lack, a left because lack of religious freedom. The Moore family fled to Holland before they came to America, and the Crockett family fled to Ireland, and the Trump family fled from Russia to France and to Germany and to America and Pennsylvania.
Now, in Pennsylvania, they pretended that they were Amish. And then later on, uh, they identified themselves as white nationalists and they joined the Ku Klux Klan and their biggest project was harassing the J. Edgar Hoover family because that family were Negroes pretending that they were white. The Richard Smith slave narratives told us that we don't need to listen to God, but listen to the almighty protector of the anti-Aryan and the anti Baboos. This religion was introduced into the world by Moreno Jews in 1486. This was uh, this was in the service of Satan to do what they wanted to do in the world and. And the uh, and this was done by attacking what is dear to one's heart and turning it against one's deepest emotions for power and material gain. Trump has done this to the. American people and that and that allowed him to inject fear, hate, confusion, and hurt into American society. The so called rational people supports him. Silence is support and agreement. What did the public tell us? What did the Bible tell us? Like I said again, it is hard to translate Swahili to English as you are reading along. What did the Bible tell us? What did the Torah tell us? What did the historical record tell us? Hebrew means African, and Africans are um, and I'm here to talk about uh, the new book uh, that is going to be put out by the, the Oakland Rosenwald School Project and the Oakland History Center in Lincolnton, North Carolina. Uh, our first book is called The Muslim Brotherhood and Fatima Bello of Sokoto. Now, that seems strange for the name of a book, but it is uh, it is relevant to our uh, to our story as we are going to explain the uh, interpretation of the Venture Smith slave narrative. Now I know, of course, some of you never knew that it needed interpreting, but it does. Uh, the uh, <clears throat> the uh, Muslim Brotherhood. I was inducted into the Muslim Brotherhood in Frankfurt, Germany, at Rhein-Main Air Force Base in 1969. Uh, 
Uh, I worked in a uh, maintenance shop as I was in the United States Air Force. And, uh, and in that shop, they had five Muslim civilian workers. And, uh, and they inducted me into the, into the Muslim Brotherhood. This is not the Muslim Brotherhood that you hear about, uh, about terrorists from the Middle East and, 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 and Al-Qaeda and all this, all this kind of stuff. This is the true Muslim Brotherhood. And they treated me as if I were a, a, a Muslim, and they showed no difference uh, between me and and the other and than Muslims are a difference between my Christianity or their Islam. Um, the person who introduced me to the Muslim Brotherhood was Hassan Nicer. He was a Tamil from uh, Sri Lanka, and <laughs> and ironically, he was from uh, Atala County, uh, Sri Lanka. Of course, you know that uh, at the, about Atala County, uh, Mississippi, uh, where the uh, Winfrey family and Oprah Winfrey is from. But anyway, these, uh, these Muslims treated me just like a member of the family. In fact, the, uh, the family of Hassan Naisa in Sri Lanka arranged a marriage for me with his sister, Regini. Of course, uh, I had to turn it down because you know I I come from the West, of course, and we don't we only uh, we have this idea that when you marry, you marry for for love and and not for, by our uh, arranged marriage of your of the family, of course. And I told uh, Hassan uh, this. And he asked me the question, what is the divorce rate in the United States? And I said, 40%. And he says, the divorce rate among us is 2%. Somebody is not doing something right. Fatima Bello of Sokoto. Fatima Bello is the ancestor of of uh, twenty five percent of the Afro American population in Lincoln County, North Carolina. She was the niece of Muhammad Bello, the second caliphate of the Sokoto. He was the second sultan of the Sokoto Caliphate of uh, Nigeria, and uh, and and this Fatima was her uh, was his uh, niece, and of course um, she uh, uh, was on her uh, was sent on an errand to. Uh, to Liberia to meet uh, a, 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 another Fulani. His name was Abdul, let me, let me get this read out. His name was Abdul Rahman Ibrahim Sori. And he was a famous 
he was a famous uh, uh, Fulani uh, military leader that that got, got captured and he was sold into slavery and ended up in Mississippi and uh, and with the help of a man who had known him in Africa they uh, they got him uh, they got a they got a uh, uh, they got help from John Quincy Adams and the ambassador from Morocco and he was able to uh, get some members of his family and and was able to uh, be sent back to to Africa but it got far as Monrovia I mean Monrovia Liberia and that's where he got sick and died but uh, in the meantime Fatima and her brother was on the way to Liberia to meet and collect him and they were attacked by Mendinka uh, Mendinka soldiers uh, Mendinka raiders, raiders and she ended up on a uh, plantation in McDowell County, North Carolina in fact, it was the John Hazard Carson uh, plantation in McDowell County, North Carolina. And I guess the largest city would be Marion, North Carolina. And, uh, and they had a problem dealing with her there because this was a black woman who were fair-skinned, by the way, who was fair-skinned, she spoke seven languages. She had the equivalent of two PhDs. And she was very hard to handle, according to the, the, the slave masters there, the slave owners. So they eventually sold her off. And uh, she had a son uh, whom uh, was called uh, Tom. And and he was sold to Jacob Forney, uh, Jacob uh, Link, I'm sorry, Jacob Link of uh, uh, Catawba County. And he had a child by uh, Jacob Forney's daughter, who was actually the daughter, uh, the, the daughter of the slave master. Jacob Link. And that was the, uh, that became the, that's how uh, Fatima Bello became the ancestor of about 25% of the black population in Lincoln County, North Carolina. Of course, there's only 4,500 black people are, uh, I mean, in Lincoln County. And she is also uh, my ancestor and one of my ancestors and and she's an ancestor of this Henrietta Roney Stacks who uh, who was one of my schoolmates at Newbold High School in Lincoln, North Carolina, which was an all black high school. And uh, for your information, uh, the exile Moreno Jews that went or were, or were, uh, was taken uh, or were taken to the uh, Gold Coast of West Africa in 1486 and met the Gabo people. Uh, and they wrote a book called the Book of Revelations that was written in Kiswahili 
which meant that it was a language from the east coast of Africa. And the Jews had learned this language in 1515 when the uh, Portuguese established trading posts on the east African coast. Of course, the Arabs later forced or chased the Portuguese out. Uh, the book of Reso uh, Revelation, I mean the Moreno book of Revelation, was based on the Swahili words for book. And among those uh, words was Kitab Mahu and Kitabu Ms. Safu, which roughly translated means that in Malagasco, the book of Malagasy, and we'll explain all of that later on, but, but in that book, There were certain notations or items that said one who is obsessed with yellow women. Now, that affects African Americans big time because African Americans especially men, are obsessed with yellow women. We call them red bones and yellow hammers. And the next word is black Dutch. Black Dutch are women that sometimes are married to Dutchmen who are yellow women and uh, that gave, gave rise to the term black Dutch colorism colorism is dealing with individuals based on the various colors of their skin. Zionism. Zionism. That who is against Zion, which means do not divide my land, said the Lord. Amen. So you understand the basis for this controversy over the state of Israel and what's going on in, uh, in uh, Israel right now. Uh, it is because the, uh, the people violated God's law from the beginning. God's law says, I do not have respect of persons and do not divide my land Zion. Now, you, don't, uh, you can read the Bible and find that definition. You know, in Zionism, and, and okay, now, that is what the Jews believed at the end of uh, World War One. They believed that. They believed that, uh, that, that you should not divide, divide the land. And, and when uh, Woodrow Wilson offered them, Woodrow Wilson and the British and the French offered them, a homeland in Palestine, 
they refused because that meant that they would have to divide.